<laughs> so who wouldn't want this? And of course, by this, I am talking about my sweet, sweet background that I am getting because I'm using a green screen right now. Who wouldn't want this? Well, <laughs> probably, well, maybe not you. We're going to talk about it. That's the subject of today's Horse's Mouth Live. Should you use a green screen? Why you might not want to use a green screen? And if you do, I'm going to share with you some tips to avoid some disasters because when green screens go wrong, they go wrong. Okay, hi. So first, uh, Blake, hi, how you doing? Thanks for thanks for tuning in. Um, let's just start this off and uh, get one thing off our collective chests. Who has not wasted more minutes than they want to admit? with Zoom's virtual background feature, <laughs> you know, playing with all of the uh, different virtual background, you know, floating in outer space or, you know, being on the beach, uh, anything like that. I think we've all <laughs> had uh, during this pandemic doing everything virtually and our meetings virtually. I think we've all had a little bit too much fun maybe with Zoom's virtual backgrounds. Uh, and they are fun, but this, uh, the topic for this video actually stems from a, comment I got from one of Horse's Mouth articles about uh, a, a good uh, camera setup. It comes from Rich uh, from San uh, Ramon, California. I'm searching for a cool green screen photos for Zoom, like the empty warehouses with all the brick you see on Dateline Secrets Uncovered. I want my office to reflect someone is missing or hurt. But seriously, I love uh, those backdrops. A green screen webinar might be interesting so uh let's t let's talk about green screen because i you know i get it uh using a green screen is very tempting because you don't have to worry about cleaning up right you don't have to worry about getting your camera frame dialed in so that it people don't see you know the trash can or your your hamper <laughs> or or whatever or like a, a scratch on your wall what have you. So it is tempting to use a green screen, but I really wanted to talk with you guys today because look, it's one thing if you're just having fun, right? It's one thing if you are, you know, hey, look, I'm at a, <laughs> I'm at a, I'm at a waterfall. Check it out, right? That's one thing when you're just kind of having fun with it and you're with your peers. Um, but it's another thing entirely when you are, you know, conducting a meeting with a client or you're you're on a webinar and you're trying to, you know, you're trying to look professional. This isn't the vibe you're going for, right? Uh, so uh, it it's a different thing entirely, and there are many mistakes <laughs> that can happen that will make uh, your green screen look terrible. Uh, just really, really bad. So I'm going to be doing a lot of, of changing uh, screens around today to kind of give you a setup. So first of all, uh, I am using a green screen. Hello there. Uh, behind me, you can see uh, all the things that the camera doesn't shoot, right? <laughs> but uh, so this is my setup. I have one behind me. Uh, um, that's what's going on today. Um, but let's let's first, the cat, Blake says the cat. Uh, you don't want the cat in on the stream, Blake, because from my experience, pets and kids draw the biggest positive reaction from, from audience members when it comes to webinars and meetings. Let me go ahead and uh, turn my mic down a little bit. I think I'm a little hot uh, here. Hopefully that uh, that sorts that out. But uh, okay, so. Some, reason, some more reasons to use green screens. You don't have to clean up, right? You can put whatever you want behind you. Uh, you don't have to worry what's in the frame. It is, it is kind of cool. Uh, I actually think that the biggest advantage to using a green screen actually comes when you are doing recorded video. Because when you're doing recorded video, you might not know what context, context you're gonna use that footage in and so being able to change up the background uh, per project can be, a, can be a valuable asset. It can give you some flexibility to use that footage in ways 
you might not have originally um, you know, thought of. So, uh, and by the way, uh, I do want to acknowledge the fact that my co-host Devin Crop is not here today. It's, I'm flying solo. We do miss Devin. Uh, shout outs to Devin uh, in the comments today. I let her know that we miss her. She is hosting um, our Savvy Social Security and Medicare workshop today. They're on day three. So uh, that's where she is. Um, let's get uh, right on and talk about how green screen can go wrong. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring up, uh, well, first of all, this is just wrong. <laughs> this looks like a, know, like a game show from the, from the 80s um, here. But, uh, hold on, we got a question. We got a comment from, uh, from Blake. One client said she did business with me because the video email I sent to her showed a personalization. That's, that's, that's great, that's great, Blake. Um, uh, personalized video is incredibly powerful. Uh, when you're when you're doing a video and you say somebody's name or even uh, you know you're directly addressing them uh, that is that that's huge maybe that's a subject actually for another for another stream we're gonna stay we're gonna stay on green screen uh, today um, and Blake says but on a recording for a webinar I would not want this Blake clarify to me are you talking about somehow personalizing the background with a green screen for a for a client uh, maybe go ahead and fill me in but um i want to move on to some more examples here of green screen done wrong so the first of all is what you choose to put behind you obviously with a green screen you can put a video behind you you can put an image behind you this is an image and on first glance you might think this is great right i'm at kind of like this midtown manhattan this looks just like our our old horse's mouth Midtown Manhattan conference room. Uh, <laughs> this kind of shot right here, but on closer inspection, you might see things, you might notice some things. First of all, am I coming out of the table? Kind of looks like I like burst <laughs> through the bottom of the table uh, to talk to everybody of, on the stream today. And also it looks like I am drastically out of proportion to the rest of the things in the room, right? Like I look like I'm like a giant within this. And this, these are one of the things you might not think about when you're using a green screen. You might be like, oh, uh, I wanna do a green screen because I don't wanna worry about my background. And this image looks great. This is what I wanna do. But you don't get in and do some testing, see how it looks. And before you know it, uh, you're giving this webinar and you look like you are, you look like you are a giant. <laughs> so that's one that's one uh thing you gotta you gotta worry about here the your alignment compared to the image right and also another thing too you gotta think about is the background being too busy so let me take you back to this video here that i got going on with here and this actually isn't isn't too too bad but when you're doing when you're doing a meeting um, or you know a webinar you want yourself to be in focus right you want to have everybody paying attention to you and the background is more context right it's, it's like the sweetener where you're you're the main course right if you have something busy going on in the background that's going to take the focus away from you it's going it's just distracting you don't want distracting and so like these waterfalls behind me here uh that's that's it's not too bad i've seen a lot worse but this is you know if the niagara falls was like a deluge behind me that would be even worse but another thing that you got to think about too is i'm going to take us back to this one here is the sharpness of the photo or video behind you ideally you want your video or the video or photo behind you to be a little blurred out and the reason why you want that is so that you, who, who is not blurred out, is going to pop, right? So you're going you're gonna to really stand out, again, making you really the center of attention, uh, which is what we're going for, which is what we want. Um, so those are kind of the things that I think people don't, is not directly apparent, a downfall with a green screen, right? That might not come to mind for you. Now, the other... Um, problems arise actually in just how 
the green screen is um, is happening on your on your computer or your your meeting client. So if you're using Zoom or a Zoom is a like that's a software based that's a software green screen that you're using when you use Zoom the Zoom virtual background feature uh, when it's just not a software green screen feature they're getting a lot better and hey maybe in a year from now two years from now this will be different and zoom or some other company is going to really knock it out of the park and get a a software green screen solution that is great and does work flawlessly but even zoom's virtual background solution is not great right and particularly around your body around your face let me go ahead and uh, switch me back here um so this by the way is an example of a photo that's getting there uh I've, i feel like i'm in pretty good proportion i'm a little big here uh but uh, i'm not coming out of any tables uh, i might be coming out of the floor a little bit but uh this is not as as bad as the other examples but what um getting back to what i was just talking about with the the software solution so like if you're in Zoom, you're using Zoom virtual background, you move around, you're going to see white space start to show up. It's just going to be a little bit around you. There might be a little bit of white space showing up. It's not terrible if you stand, you know, super still, you don't move your arms at all. But if you're giving up, if you're giving a presentation or you're getting animated, you know, that's going to happen. Uh, so we don't want that. Um, and then if you are using well, whether you're using a software-based solution or you're using like a hardware uh, green, like an actual green screen behind you, like what I'm using, um, you can run into some some problems with that as well. And what I'm talking about with problems is, let me see if I can create it here. So um, maybe my lighting is too good here, but you can actually get the green screen to uh, to believe. I'm trying to get some shadows to. Uh, to show this to you guys but the green screen will start to like bleed out and you see this a lot where it'll it'll start to like um you'll see like the pixels um if i turn down my light one bear with me one here a second here i want to show you guys this so if i turn down my light like this yeah okay here we go so i just turned down my light a little bit and you can see in the top left corner of the image it's starting to bleed out a little bit. It's actually not terrible, but uh, uh, here we go, here we go. So this is terrible here. So um, look at all this gl all this glitchiness. Uh, generally, you're not going to have it be this bad, or you would or you would stop, you know, whatever you're doing and try to fix it. But little patches of this uh, will show up, and the reason why this is happening is because my green screen is not. Um, evenly lit it's not getting enough light and therefore you know the computer doesn't know uh, is losing the ability to tell the difference between the green of the green screen which it's trying to filter out and the rest of the image let's go ahead and bring this turn my light back on here oh wrong way there we go there we go here now uh, the second thing that can happen to you uh, with a green screen is around, and I actually think I have a little bit of this going on too, is, is the green halo. So when you're using a green screen, the, what the lighting that's hitting the green screen can reflect that green back to you, especially with hair. So this can be a, a big problem with, uh, with women uh, because women tend to have more hair. And so there's more space for that green to kind of get in and pollute the image so it's not terrible for me uh, right now but this is de but it can definitely be worse like you can have like a full-on <laughs> green a green halo going on uh yeah so uh bruce is, is saying so the office i am seeing behind you is not real correct correct bruce uh this is not this is not a real office this is just an image that i have um set up and as you can see behind me i'm not i am not in the, i'm at my home uh i am not in an in an office environment at all this is just an image i have behind me in the software i'm using using a green screen 
um, to make it look like I'm in an office. So like I said, this is out of the examples I'm showing you, this is probably the best one. It's not perfect, but this I would say could be pretty functional uh, here. So thanks for, the, uh, thanks for the question. So let's kind of move on to, um, so the green screen bleed, the halo effect. Let's move on to, I think the biggest reason not to use a green screen and this actually has nothing to do with a green screen disaster, with it looking terrible. This has something to do with, uh, well, everything to do with, with actually an advantage you're missing out on if you use a green screen, and that is the ability to showcase you, your personality. Uh, Lynn thinks this looks great. Okay, thank you, Lynn. <laughs> oh, Jim says it looks good too. Uh, he, I initially, I gotta share this one. Uh, so Jim says, uh, FYI, you look good. I initially thought this was the horse's mouth office. I know you have, uh, addressed another tech, uh, in the past. Uh, let's see if I can get, if I can get the rest of that. Uh, can you provide us a list of what you are using? What type of mic, uh, is it? Okay. So I'll, I'll quickly, uh, okay. All right. Um, I got a bunch of questions here about this. So First, where am I getting these images? I actually got these from canva.com, which is an online photo editor slash stock photo uh, service. And they actually went big when um, the, uh, the pandemic first hit and everybody was going remote. Uh, they put forth a big effort to provide a lot of these Zoom vir virtual background type images and videos. So that's where I got it. Now I am using, so just to quickly give you, give you guys a rundown of what I'm do I'm using. So I am using a Canon, a DSLR camera. Uh, I got a green, again, I got a green screen behind, you can see it here. So that's my camera right there. I got a big newer ring light that's lighting me. And that's actually the only light on the green screen. So that's actually su sufficient. I actually uh, did have, I had this smaller LED light on hand just in case I needed to give some more light uh, to the green screen in case I was getting some of that bleed effect, which actually I was earlier, but I turned up the uh, uh, the ring light and that was sufficient. And then, so I'm, I have an AT2020 um, USB condenser microphone uh, that's providing audio. And the, the big thing is that I am using a software called vMix, which is an encoding and multimedia uh, video switcher to, you know, take all in all my inputs, my camera, my mic, you know, my second camera here, and and put pump that out via over the internet to Facebook Live. So that's that's my kind of tech uh, roundup. And if you want to get the basics of the gear that. I suggest advisors use if they're if you're trying to upgrade your quality uh, for meetings or web or online webinars. Online webinars is such a oxymoron. <laughs> you don't need to say that. Yeah, I always do. Uh, but you can actually go to horsesmouth.com, uh, search uh, search for Pierce in the author uh, ca uh, category uh, in search, and it'll be like a few down. It will be a how to look good in your online meetings, I believe is the name of the, of the article I did. Um, yeah. So let's see here. Thank you. Thank you guys uh, for the question. And I'm, I'm glad to hear that it's looking good. Um, that's good to hear. One thing to note too, though, is that you're watching this on Facebook live and Facebook live limits the amount, the resolution that I can, I can transmit to you guys to uh, 720p so if you were watching this at a higher resolution you might notice some of the green halo ness right you, some of the more more details that could maybe make this look off to you but because you're watching this at a smaller resolution um it's harder for you to spot okay uh so let's get back to i think what is actually the most key point of this stream that i want to share with you guys is that when you use a green screen and you have this artificial background, you do lose out on the ability for you to showcase you, right? Yeah, you have to put some forethought 
into arranging your background and what people are going to see and what you want to include in the frame. But when people see things that are personal to you, like let's say, like I, I did a webinar with like Bill Cates, um, business coach Bill Cates, and he had like a football up on his bookcase that was signed. And we got so many people in that webinar asking, you know, what's that football? Who signed that? Right. It's, it's, it's things like that. And it, it, it makes a connection between you and the people watching where, oh, you know, oh, he likes that college football team. I forget what, what team it, Bill got that from, but uh, somebody was like, go, you know, whatever team, <laughs> whatever mascot. And uh, so there was like an instant connection that happened um, because Bill didn't use a green screen. He used his office and he was thoughtful about what to include in his frame that people could see. So, and I think a lot of people want to make it as professional as possible, which I'm not saying don't be professional. Of course, you want to be professional. You don't want to have, you know, dirty laundry or something uh, in the shot. But, you know, if you're a big Star Wars fan or something, maybe have a lightsaber in the frame. Uh, I think people are a little afraid of doing that because they're afraid of being judged. But I tell you what, more people... <laughs> Are going to connect with you over that lightsaber then are going to you know be offended i think that's an overreaction you know i might you might not have like a full like jedi dojo behind you <laughs> uh, but little things little things that kind of just showcase your personality and who you are beyond just being a financial advisor is what i'm getting at and so i think by using a green screen you are losing out on that and i think that's not that's not a light thing uh, something to just discard that i i think it's worth putting some thought into your background and you got to remember too that i think a great goal to have is to have a studio set up a studio in your office or your home get that background dialed in just the way you like it and now every time you do a webinar or you have a client meeting or what have you, you're in the studio, it's, it's already set up, you're good to go. And then you can do things like what, what I'm right, doing right now, you can go on Facebook Live, what have you, you can record your, your, your videos that you do all in the same location. You don't have to keep moving things, it's all in place, ready to go for you. Um, so that's kind of the key point I wanted to make for you guys here. Um, Let's see here. Uh, so Lynn said, I just can't change the bookcase full of tax books and a printer behind me. So an artificial background may look a whole lot better. Well, maybe, maybe Lynn, but, um, you know, tax books, people see the tax books and they know, wow, you know, Lynn, she's really, uh, she's really keeping up to date on the tax code and she knows her stuff, you know, uh, the printer, uh, you know, that's kind of, eh, maybe try to move that. <laughs> But uh, if it's, uh, at least if like papers aren't like laying all over it, uh, I don't think that would be too bad. But uh, again, yes, it does take added effort, right? It is um, tempting to use a green screen and have whatever you want behind you. It's tempting, I get it. But if you just take, if you just put a little forth some effort and planning, uh, your little studio, your, your background behind you, I really think it can help you uh, connect better in your videos. And look, if you're doing, if you're sharing your screen in Zoom 95% of the time and you're just a picture in picture for your attendees, you know, that's different. But if you are going, you know, full video, uh, I do think people are going to notice things in your background and that can be a great thing. Uh, for making that connection between you and them. Uh, let's see if I if I got every question here that's come in. Um, the green uh, Lynn says the green screen needs to have a certain a capability to work with a computer, but I don't know the correct terminology. Uh, so most green screens you buy, which that's another thing. Um, I can't really recommend a particular green screen right now. I'm using something called the. Uh, let me get it for you. Here, it's the uh, Padcaster. 
green screen padcaster here. And this is a collapsible green screen. So after this is done, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to spend half an hour trying to fold it back up into a nice little circle. I can put back into that case. <laughs> um, but uh, that's what I'm using. But right now, you know, still it's getting better, but still uh, the demand for these type of products is still very, very high. So you are, if you are looking for a green screen, um, you're going to have to just kind of see what's available. And I mean, most of them are going to work. I do recommend getting a, you know, a full, a collapsible green screen over just getting a cloth be, unless, unless you're not going to move it at all. Um, because the cloth ones, they do take a while to set up. Um, <laughs> uh, and, and the collapsible ones are nice. They're convenient. I'm laughing because, uh, Blake is saying, <laughs> I'm in your office now with the Canva. <laughs> <laughs> Where is he? <laughs> hey, if you got to finish the coffee, you got to make a new pot, Blake. <laughs> uh, so, uh, okay. Uh, that's really uh, the key things that I wanted to share with you uh, about what you need to consider, uh, what you're missing out on if you don't use a green, green screen. Uh, I did want to mention that the company Elgato makes a awesome green screen that is like a it's like a blind, it's like a window blind, but it's, uh, but it like rolls on the floor. So you just pull it, you just pull it up by a handle and it sticks straight up and then you collapse it down and it's, it's ready to be moved away. I think that's a super convenient solution, but I've tried, I've been trying to get one for a while. So good luck. <laughs> good luck trying to get your hands on one. Uh, they're super rare, but okay. So let's move on to some tips then for you want to use a green screen you you say doug that's great i can connect better with people uh by setting up my background <laughs> and showing off my personality uh but forget that i want that green screen um i want i want this i want this so how uh here's some tips to use to make sure that it does not look terrible because again green screen can go wrong it can go really wrong really easily. Um, and so let's let's kind of cover some tips here. The first key with a green screen is it has got to be evenly lit. Okay, so you now have to think, how am I lit? Okay, I'm well lit. Now you have to think, how is my green screen lit? Because the way green screen works is whatever software or platform you're using is chroma keying out the green screen so it's based on color so if you have a poorly lit or a patchily lit green screen well it's not all green there's now some like darker shades of green you know it's and now your green screen you're going to get that bleed effect i showed you guys earlier where it's going to start to like fade out you're going to start to kind of see the green screen a little bit so you got to have it evenly lit um, that will involve using powerful enough lights for you that helps because that, that's that's what i'm using right now i have a i have a nice ring light that's powerful enough to light both me and the green screen behind me but if that's not true for you you might have to get additional lights and shine them just on your green screen right and uh, so you gotta have the green screen evenly lit now the next thing and this is a big one too is it cannot be or it shouldn't be directly behind you. So what you're seeing here, this is actually, I would say too close. And if you guys were seeing this on a fuller res resolution video, you would see, you would be seeing some green around, around my hair, especially. And that is because the green screen is too close, it's too close behind me. And the light that's coming from my ring light is bouncing off that green screen and it's getting reflected back onto me where it's gonna show up in my hair and on my outline. So to fix that, ideally I would move the green screen back a foot or so, a foot or even more. But then again, then if I did that, which is what I should do, maybe my light then isn't good enough to fully light it. You see how it's gonna complicate things here and I would need to bring in other lights. Um, so that's another thing, evenly lit, not right behind you. And again, 
depending upon how much space you're working with, that might be easier said than done. Uh, I'm in not the biggest room possible. I had to spend a lot of time, so much so that I was a little frantic before I started today's stream, <laughs> hoping I was going to have be able to go live on time because I was trying to get my green screen set up where it was it was in the face. but look at that this is another thing too see how my hand see how my hand here is going out it's kind of disappearing before i get to the image that's another that's another thing that can happen with green screen really easily um that you need to watch out for um so and then the third thing this is my third and final tip for using green screen and you think this would be obvious yeah it is but hey we're human and we got a lot of things in our mind these days don't wear green or use anything with green in it. So you got your nice, you got your Starbucks mug, mug here. You are you know, you got, you're wearing a shirt. All of a sudden it looks like your, your, your torso has gone to a different dimension. Uh, you got to avoid the color green. <laughs> and you know, that's something when you're first getting used to using a green screen, you're not exactly, you're not thinking about that necessarily. Until it happens and everybody everybody gets a good laugh. It's not like it's a disaster or anything like that. But uh, it might be if you don't realize it's happening and you're talking, you're trying to be serious, right? You're not laughing it off. You don't realize it's happening. You're trying to be serious, make a serious point, but your head is floating <laughs> in the office, right? In the background. So that's another um, thing to avoid. You got to avoid the color green. Uh, or the color blue if you're chroma keying off the color blue, but most of you will be using green. Uh, so let's see here. Um, what about, okay, so uh, Blake's asking, what about Camtasia? I would assume with Camtasia that it's it's pretty much it's pretty much the same thing. I mean, a green screen and, and chroma keying, they're working off the same principles. So I'm gonna I'm gonna assume it's I've never used Camtasia with a green screen, so I know that I don't know it 100%, but I'm gonna go ahead and assume that it's it's got to be it's got to be pretty close, um, in how it works. So Jim is asking, how do you light you and the screen without you projecting a shadow? Great question, Jim. So firstly, with your with your main light, if you're using one light, so just the key the the key light. Uh, as they say, to avoid having a shadow, you gotta have you gotta have it close to you, closer like so close that your eyes start to be like ah this is kind of annoying, right? It's gotta be close to you, that reduces the shadow behind you, and then also it help it can help too to raise the light up and angle it down at like a forty five degree angle, so it's kind of like it's kind of hitting you at a forty five degree angle instead of being like right on you. That'll help. That'll help with. Uh, with the shadows there and then and then the other thing is more lights more lights uh, not only can you have like a three-point light set up where you've got you know one light 45 degrees from you this way another light 45 degrees out in front of you the other way hitting you more evenly but you've got another light you know hitting you behind it's called a uh, like a kicker or hair light to give you a little bit more definition. I'm just using the, again, I'm just using the one light uh, here today. But uh, like this, this would be like a good example of a hair light where, um, you know, you got it, you got it behind you and it just kind of like makes you stand out a little bit more. Uh, and that'll help separate you from the green screen but also more lights for the green screen. I'm talking about using something like this, which I was gonna use for today, and just pointing it at the green screen in any trouble areas where I'm getting, where it's getting too dark and the green screen starting to bleed through. So additional, additional lights for the green screen is, uh, is what will help you there, Jim. I hope I, asked, I answered your question. Um, Let's see here. So can I, uh, Blake's asking, can I not use the video camera for my computer? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You absolutely can do that. Uh, you know, I'm using, but obviously the cameras in your computer have an image sensor that's 
really tiny. It's going to need a lot. Lighting's even more important with that, actually, because that little image sensor in your in your built-in computer camera is going to need a lot more light than the camera, the DSLR camera I'm using, which has a much bigger sensor uh, uh, to to take that image in. So yeah, you can use the camera uh, built into your computer, and um, you know. I'm glad you you raised this because uh, this brings back this issue of this feeling that you need all this gear to to before you can even do like a live stream or a webinar, and that's ridiculous. That's just going to keep you from. Uh, not only is it hard to get a whole of the stuff you need, um, and by the way, you need more than the camera to do what I'm doing now. You need things like a like a capture. You need things like a capture card uh, to plug a cable from your your camera into into this to go into your computer to get a, a, a like an actual camera to work. It's a whole thing. Definitely check out my article that I wrote uh, on Horse's Mouth about it. Uh, that'll give you all the details in that whole tech stack for how to do it. But no, you can absolutely use your webcam that's that's in your computer. You can do a green screen with that. Uh, the quality is not going to be as good, um, but it's more important for you to get going uh, um, than to have a perfect setup. Absolutely. Um, uh, uh, let's see here. What else have we got here? Did I miss anything? Uh, uh, so Lynn's asking, am I correct that I need the pro version of Zoom in order to use a green screen? That's a good question, Lynn. I am a pro Zoom user. So I know I have it. I'm not sure. I, I'm not 100%. If somebody could fill us in there, if somebody has a free account and they know um, whether they have green screen functionality, please, uh, please let us know. It's been a while since I've been on the free Zoom account, so I don't know what functionality they've enabled or they've taken away or what have you recently. So I'm not 100% on that. I think it is available for free, but I'm not. I'm not 100% sure on that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, Blake, yes, I'm using vMix as the software. Uh, so vMix is a professional level uh, in, uh, switcher and encoder, which let um, which lets you you which you can use with Facebook Live, which you can use on YouTube Live, uh, RTMP. You know, you can send a video stream to virtually any place you want to on the internet, including your website if you have you know, a, uh, a content delivery network set up, something like Vimeo or something like that. But uh, it's vMix. Uh, it is, uh, if you want to get started with, with, with streaming, I recommend something like StreamYard before you go into vMix. Or if you're on Mac, uh, vMix is PC. vMix is PC only. So if you're on a Mac, you would have to use uh, Ecamm Live. Ecamm Live is the Mac solution. Um, to use there. But um, I recommend if you're looking to get into streaming, use something like StreamYard. It's browser-based instead of being a software that runs on your computer. And it's just, it gives you like, you know, 70% of the functionality you would want with a big time ease of use. So I always get your feet wet with something like StreamYard or even just going live right through Facebook, right? Facebook lets you, it'll pick up your webcam and your microphone. You can just go live right there or the, or the YouTube right from your phone right if you go to your the Facebook app on your phone there's a function it looks like a camera where you can just go live right now, right then and there so uh, I would recommend those options before going full hog with vMix but if you want to make your live streams or your webinars as professional as possible the vMix is a is the way or or ecamm live if you're on a Mac um, but there is a learning curve. It's not, it's not dead simple. Um, so just know, just keep that in mind. Uh, let's see here. So, uh, let me see here. Jim's asking what the device is. Okay. So let me go here on my left. Uh, what is the device on your left? I think you mean does not look like a laptop. Let me get your comment out of the way. Uh, uh, so this is, uh, is my mo is a monitor. That's a monitor. I'm actually looking at your comments. This is not StreamYard. This is vMix. 
uh, Lynn, this is vMix. Uh, so that, that's actually a monitor. I actually have, I have two monitors set up. I just got my second monitor <laughs> from our office delivered to my house. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> need that second monitor, need that second monitor. Uh, so that's what that is. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, so uh, is uh, stream yard, Lynn. Maybe I misinterpreted your your question. Your question. I am suggesting you use something called Stream Yard, like uh, you know, yard is in the backyard, and stream as in the stream floating by. Uh, okay, okay, J sorry, Jim. Uh, Jim says I meant lap. Okay, um, let me go ahead and share this again. So this, well, actually, this might be better. This is a X keys control surface. I've got, um, I don't know how many keys I got on here, like 60. So basically I, you, I tell vMix that when I hit this button, when I hit this button, I want you to change scenes to this. And when I hit that button, I want it to change back to this. When I, I hit this button, I want that, that social comment to come up from you. And then when I hit it again, I want it to go away. It's just, a, it's just to automate the process because when you're doing a live stream by yourself um, you want it to be as automated as possible and you want to be able to do things like now right you don't want to be like hold on folks let me change this here you know you, you just want it you just want to click it have it switch click it have it switch you know give me that snazzy background uh, dramatic moment right <laughs> it just lets you do it just lets you do fun things uh, quicker uh, so let's see here I'm gonna leave up the snaz um, I Brad's got a question how big is the green screen I'm gonna have to look into that it's a it's a lot taller than it is um, it's a lot wider than it is tall I actually have it standing up uh, the other way but I mean that sounds close I would say it's more like five by eight maybe even five by five by ten um, um, it's, uh, maybe not quite that big, but it's pretty big. It's pretty big. Um, and that's another thing too. You will see, uh, a lot of ads for these kind of smaller green screens that just kind of attach to the back of your debt of your seat. And I'm telling you, <laughs> you're going to want to get a bigger one. <laughs> <laughs> because the smaller the green screen, the, the easier it is to do stuff like this. Uh, it's not showing up on this frame. Let me change. The easier it is for stuff like this to happen, right? Because this, um, uh, you just, uh, actually, that's not, that's not actually an example of what I'm talking about, but it's really easy to have the green screen, you know, kind of leave, leave the shot, and then you're seeing the actual background or the frame of the green, green screen. So you always want to go a little bit bigger than what you think you're going to need. Absolutely. Absolutely. So if there are no more questions, that's, um, that's definitely all I had prepared for today. But I do want to say that every week, every week, Thursday at two, um, let me change to the snazzy here. So every Thursday at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern uh, on Facebook Live, on Horses Mouths uh, Facebook page, we are going to do this stream. And it is, I'm so debating what I want to call it. I think I'm going to call it the Advisors Digital Toolbox. That's kind of the name I've been using for the article series on Horse's Mouth. But um, basically talk about all these tech tools, these online presentation tools, uh, the you know the online, the, the digital marketing strategy and tip stuff. It's basically going to be everything uh, that we can do to help you guys connect with your clients virtually connect reach out and connect with your prospects virtually in the easiest way possible because i get it you don't want like the vmix the vmix live stream setup that i'm using right now that's why i suggest Streamyard because i gotta spend a lot of time the night before setting this up the minutes before let's be real sometimes <laughs> uh you gotta spend time setting it up right and you got to get everything uh configured whereas you stream yard with a webcam on your computer 
you're taking the mic taking your microphone from your computer you know that's that's a click away so uh, I do factor in ease of use but anyway every Thursday 2 p.m. Eastern the advisors digital toolbox here on horses mouth live Lynn you're very welcome thank you thank you for your for your comments and your questions and and for watching so until until next time take care everybody I hope you enjoyed the stream bye now